we get a full size bed in a not full size space. Bungee cords are our favorite thing in the world. <laughs> Having someone to travel with is way, way better mm -hmm. than doing it by yourself. I'm Marissa Toomson. And I'm Brett Triano. This is our van. It's a 1997 Ford E250. She's a beaut. Welcome into the van. I'm in the little kind of seating area just inside the door here. Right underneath to me is our Goal Zero Yeti Lithium 3000. It's an all-in-one kind of unit. I've got it hooked up to 200 watts of solar on, on the roof. We stay pretty charged up, especially here in, in Colorado. We're at about 9,000 feet here and we get plenty of sun. Under this section of the bench is storage. We've got random camera gear. Underneath of all that is the heater, which is a, it's a Chinese diesel heater. So instead of like $1,200, it's like $160. And it's the same thing. We keep the diesel fuel inside. I'm sure someone has a reason it's not a good idea, but it's been fine for me for a year and I fill it up often and use the heat all the time. And then right here you could see I've got this lagoon table thing. The little piece of it broke. That's why we stick it over on the side here for when we're driving. I've seen a lot of builds where you have the bed and then the bed like unfolds into like an eating area or something. I just didn't want to deal with that. I just wanted a specific place to hang out. For this van, I, I cut the roof off and added this topper on. Well, it gives you a ledge, which looked like a good spot to put little baskets and have storage. So I think the more storage you can have in a, in a van, the better. Everything needs to have a, its own spot or you're just gonna have stuff everywhere. So we've got like this is here is like our bath stuff, like toothbrushes and toothpaste. This is Marissa's extra camera stuff. This is kind of our first aid area. You can see we've got little art from different people just to brighten up the place a bit, make it feel more homey. This van's a kind of a combination of Marissa's old van and the current van. I had these baskets, which are also mirrored on the other side. And these wicker baskets are from her van. Moving back towards our bed, We've got the roof here, which is nice, thick wood panel. I don't know if I would do that again. It wasn't very cheap and it adds quite a bit of weight and it takes uh, away a bit of headroom, but it does look nice. We've got an inch of insulation all around the van, except for the floor. Moving down from there, the clothing here. I came up with this bungee idea. Either I came up with it or I saw it somewhere. I don't want to take credit if I wasn't a person, but I just, it's kind of diagonal and you could just pull what you want out and stuff it in. And it's really nice because even if it doesn't fit perfect, like a drawer or something, it'll just like bungee out and then you can, you could stuff extra things in there, which is really nice. I think it's a great idea to get like pouches to kind of compartmentalize things as far as socks and underwear and smaller things. You'll, if you're using something like this, you're going to lose tiny things most likely. So keep them in kind of a bag all together if you're gonna do that. And then here's our bed, which is I think one of my favorite parts of the van. It's really cool. Right now it's kind of in a seating position. So, you know, if we wanna hang out or something, we could get up here and we still have the entire front of the van uh, open. We've had like five people in here before and it's, you know, plenty of room. It does slide down. So I just unhook that and slide it down. Now you can see we have the bed that goes all the way back. We can get out of bed and have the blankets all a mess and everything, you know, stuff everywhere. And we could still put it away without cleaning everything up. So I can just pull this up and slide it back. And that's, that's it. We don't have to make anything, we can leave the bed a mess. We can leave stuff on the bed. That's why we went with this design. We get a full-size bed in a not full-size space.
so we actually met in a pull-off up in Washington. I did my own van journey from Michigan and I went to Washington and he came up the coast and we met a bunch of awesome, amazing people in Bellingham, Washington. There's a pull-off that you can meet other van lifers and I ended up staying there a week with these friends and then one day he pulled up in this thing and, and then we started caravanning a little bit and then we got jobs together. Yeah, restoring and, a sailboat. Which was awesome. One thing about living on the road is you just meet really cool people and you get really cool opportunities. They'll come. But, and then we just said, let's move into one van and travel. So, that's what we've done. Now we're both in this <laughs> van. I'd say the transition for us, you know, when we transitioned to mm -hmm. being in the same van, wasn't all that bad. Mm -hmm. This van's pretty big. And previously, before that, we were driving both of our vans and we would sleep in her van and cook and stuff in my van because yeah. I had the kind of kitchen set up in here. Once we kind of retrofitted this van and added the bigger bed and everything and we were able to sleep mm -hmm. and cook in the same place, it was almost easier for us yeah, um, big time. to do that. Living with two people in a van is definitely fun. Um, you have to find the right person to do it with because you're with them 24 seven in very, very small corners, so. Yeah, when you bump each other, you get pissed off. Yeah, <laughs> there's times and there's gonna be days where it's like you want your space and someone can go sit up in the bed and someone can sit on the bench and you can get your time away, but it definitely is, you get very close to a person that you live in a van with. This is the other side of the van. Uh, these are the bins that mirror the other bins that you just saw. These ones, we have our kitchen place and our bowls. The next bin that we have is just all of our paperwork, some extra paintings and stuff that our friends have given us, a calendar that we don't use, just some extra paper junk to have it have a place. And then the next bin after that is all of our gloves. We have all of our utensils and pens and pencils. Have a good place for that. Uh, moving downwards, this is the kitchen area. Uh, we got a nice countertop. We have this that hooks in for when we're driving. And then when we're sitting somewhere and actually cooking, it can open up and have a little sink in it that we drain to the bottom. And then we have our Coleman cooker that sits right on the counter, which I highly suggest because in my old van, one thing that was really difficult for me is the way I set it up was I put the kitchen in the back and all of my kitchen equipment like put away. And that was really difficult because whenever you wanted to eat or cook something, it was like an hour process of getting everything out and cooking everything and then cleaning it and then putting it away. And with this, it's kind of just you grab a pan and you sit it down and you cook. And then this is our favorite part about the van. Maybe not our favorite part, but my favorite utensil actually. It's just a boiler. It uses electricity. It's really simple. It's just honestly the best. You can boil water and cook ramen in like two minutes with it. It's amazing. I love it so much. When you move down from the kitchen, we have our cupboard right here. Brett put these little sacks on top of it, I guess you would call, for extra storage. We use uh, this bungee cord to keep it closed. Bungee cords are our favorite thing in the world. Honestly, you wouldn't think of them as like a great tool, but it keeps things in place when you're moving. Behind here is our five gallon water jug. It works great for two people. We fill it up not too often. And then the jug that we drain the sink from is under here as well. This is the fridge. This one's from my van. Brett used to have a lot smaller one. I think this size is great. And I do think having a fridge in van life is a pretty, big benefit honestly because i've done the whole trips thing with a cooler and getting ice constantly it's just kind of a pain so if you have the money and you're trying to figure out a build i think getting a fridge is definitely one of the things that you should put at a higher priority so i, I put the roof on this van and i learned a lot doing it but i wanted a van that i could stand in and I've seen like the, they're like fiberine roofs or whatever they're called. They're like $5,000 to buy for your van. And I was on a budget. I ended up getting the van 
and the roof together for two thousand dollars but they weren't they were separated the van was one van with the roof it's normal roof and then the topper was just separate for a different van then i just kind of cut the roof off of this van and i was like well i have to do it now like it's i i don't really have a choice it, it was it was i did it in the middle of winter too which is a bad idea it was snowing inside of the van and uh yeah, it, it was a lot of work, but I ended up having to cut the topper into pieces and fiberglassing it back together so it would fit this body of the van. If you're gonna do it yourself, maybe get some friends to help you out. So I did it by myself and it's very heavy, maybe five to 600 pounds <laughs> and use rivets. I, I did it first with screws and they wiggle loose and the roof fell off once and I, uh, I put it back on and the rivets, they hold a lot better, so. <laughs> now we're back in uh, kind of our garage space, our back storage. We've got Reflectix on the back here. Uh, Originally, I was kind of scared to drive the van without being able to see out the back windows, but now that's not really a concern of mine because you could drive just fine without seeing out the back windows. So we thought we would put this up to keep the heat inside and to block the light from getting out when we're got our lights on at night. Inside, you can see I've got a, my mountain bike. I've got two pairs of skis in here and just a bunch of kind of outdoor gear and storage. All the tools I used to build the van, including the putting the topper on and everything is inside of the van. So anytime something breaks or I wanna modify something and change something, which we've done quite a bit and we do often, um, we're able to do. This little bag chart, which is actually super awesome. I definitely suggest those, they work great. And then we have a lot of toys. We've got a kite. We've got this big, I love this thing. It's a giant foam airplane. And when you're out in the desert and stuff hanging out, sometimes you wanna have fun and you know, fly a kite or throw an airplane or something. We've also got this airplane, not just one, we've got two. That's our garage. We've got a lot of storage and a lot of junk. If I was gonna give anyone advice, I would say, if you are curious and have felt like, mm -hmm. oh, you wanna try van life, then you should definitely yeah. go try it. I think you should try it soon because it's getting more difficult in some places. There's been a lot of uh, pushback mm -hmm. from different cities and stuff. And it's, it's not hard to do, but it's not the easiest thing in the world either. You might pull out of your driveway and break down and be like, oh crap, but you just fix it and then keep going. Mm -hmm. um, things are gonna happen. There's always gonna be something wrong or something going on, but you're also gonna see crazy awesome stuff yeah. and you're gonna meet great people if you put yourself out there. Maybe just get your SUV and go do a weekend trip or a week long trip and see how you like it. Mm -hmm. That could be a good start. You don't need a hundred thousand dollar van mm -mm. this van all <laughs> done together like obviously this is not for everybody but the van's nice it's and it runs well progress. but i think i spent maybe six or seven thousand dollars on it that's the buying the van that's the electric that's everything and mm -hmm. i've gotten deals on stuff and i put it together with scrap wood but my goal was to go see stuff and so i did that and it's worked perfectly fine. And then I was the type of person who would watch these videos and dream about doing the van life forever and ever and ever. And the thing was, is you're never gonna be ready. You know, you could say, I'm gonna do it after college. I'm gonna do it after I retire. But I spent a year working and trying to find the perfect van. Then I spent two months decorating it and making sure it was like perfect. But you'll never be ready to leave. You'll try and plan out your entire trip. Like I got a planner and was like, I'm gonna plan it everywhere I'm gonna sleep for the next three months 
but that's just not realistic. You kind of just got to get it and just go. You know, you'll figure it on the, out on the road. If you don't have much money, you'll find a job. You'll meet people. Like, it's just something you kind of just have to jump into, which is definitely a scary thing to do. But it's very, very worth it. And I think if you want to travel, this is one of the best ways to do it. My Instagram is Marissa Toomsen, M-A-R-I-S-A-T-O-O-M-S-E-N. It's kind of fun. If you wanted to follow me on Instagram, it's Brett Triano with a little underscore between yeah. those. But if you're interested cool. in the van building thing at all, it's the same on YouTube as Brett Triano, mm -hmm. but I don't post yeah. very often and the videos are horrible. But if you want to see the van being built, yeah. that's the place to go. That's where you should go. Thanks for thanks for checking it yep. out. Yep. Follow Tiny Home Tours. Hi mom. Hi dad. <laughs> thanks David and Dar. Your boat's <laughs> awesome.